So we're here to talk about um, Lumen, the Lumen Spanish course, and we are thrilled to be, jo I'm Joni Feld, I'm VP of Partnerships at Lumen, and I'm excited to, let me move this out of the way if I can, and I'm excited to be joined by John Urang, our course project manager, who was the lead designer on the uh, Lumen course with the subject matter experts, and then we're joined with presenters from uh, Pima Community College, who are, have adopted and are piloting course this semester, Elena Grajeda, Myra Cortez Torres, and Liz Rangel, and we're excited to have them join and share their perspective and how, um, how they've experienced the course and their students. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll start out and present, uh, give you a little bit of information and background about Lumen, and let me make sure my one moment. Presenting. I'll screen one moment. There we go. So I'll just give a little bit of an introduction very quick about Lumen and our Waymaker courseware, and then I'll have John join us and walk you through a module of the Spanish course. And then um, our Pima um, instructors, I'll have them walk you through. They've been able to bring the course into their LMS, which is D2L or Brightspace, and talk about the, what they've done with the course, um, their experience with their adoption of the course, and how their students reacted with it as well. So, just a quick background about Lumen. We were founded, um, Lumen was actually founded in 2012, but we grew out of a Gates Foundation grant. And the Gates Foundation grant, the projects were based on improving learning results for at-risk students. And so we started with Open Educational Resources, or OER, and we really worked to, um, focused upon those students and working to really make them successful. So as we've continued to grow, one of the um, important things that we do is work with, um, we work with the courseware in order to increase student success and make sure that there is an ease of adoption for instructors. So our courseware is used by over 2,000 faculty at 350 institutions, and this is all back in 2019. In 2019 alone, we saved 260,000 students over $30 million by using, choosing to use Lumen courseware instead of um, traditional published literature materials. And our content, since it's openly licensed, it can be accessed on our website. And currently, or back in 2019, it's been accessed over seven, by 75 million independent learners as well as those that are using it in the classroom. Just diving a little bit into the Waymaker courseware. So our courses are built, it's a courseware, it's, a, it's digital materials. And we start out by curating the best OER content that's out there. Um, as we continue to work with instructors, especially for the Spanish course, we had to develop quite a bit of the materials out there, and we do that with subject matter experts um, across the country. And we always start with learning design. So when we're developing our courses, we start with the student learning outcomes, we align that curated course material with the student learning outcomes, and we build them into a full set of courses. There's a lot of learning design that goes in into the courses. Um, and just as we talk about the enriched OER content, things that are included in that are a full text. A full text. There are assessments, um, machine graded assessments. Uh, we also have instructor graded assessments, discussions. It comes with PowerPoints. It includes interactive. So when you're talking about OER content, you are uh, talking about the full suite of the courseware that you, that you would expect to get with a course. Um, we do have a seamless integration into the, your LMS, and the LMSs that we work with are Blackboard, Canvas, Brightspace, or G2L, and Moodle. And when we talk about that deep integration, a lot of people say that they're integrated into the LMS, but ours is more than just going in and clicking on a link. It is fully integrated in there. So students come in, they're not paused, they're not asked for any kind of password. They click directly into the learning materials on the first day of class. And as they're looking at their computer, they still believe that they're in whatever, in the case of Piment, in their Brightspace um, course shell. And they don't realize that it's actually been linking into because of that deep integration. You get full grade return on the, um, on the assessments that are in there, the machine graded assessments. And then the assignments and discussions that come in do come in as LMS native assignments and discussions. So it is a deep integration with your LMS. 
We provide frequent practice and feedback as well as we develop the courses. Our, our courses and our Waymaker courses are based on a mastery approach. So we want the students to really work through the courseware to be paused and asked for feedback on it. There is a lot of formative practice in there, which are no stakes assessments. So the students can test their knowledge as they're moving through the content. Um, they get immediate feedback on what they got correct or incorrect. Uh, students are working through the content, the mindset that they're in right now, even if they do turn in an assignment and you provide wonderful feedback back to them, when they receive that assignment back, they may not be in the same mindset or they might not understand um, the feedback that's coming back to them. We want to catch them right in that moment when they're having difficulties and provide feedback on whether they got it correct and whether they got it incorrect. Um, the other thing that the Waymaker Courseware does is it really helps the students learn by doing. We know that when, th when the content's difficult or students are practicing, especially in the language courses, that they really learn by doing and being exposed to the content. So there's a lot of chances for the students to integrate with the courseware, to interact with it, to have simulations and practice as they move through. The Waymaker provides a personalized study plan um, we provide feedback on the, to the students. We didn't want to take an adaptive learning approach where we just serve up the next bit of content. We want the students to actually work through the materials um, as they work through pre-tests, through um, the formative um, assessments and the quiz. They get feedback back on their personalized learning plan so they can see where they're doing well and where they may need a little bit of extra attention as they move through it. Um, we do want to make sure that the students, we provide feedback back to them. It tells them why they're doing well, where they've struggled on quizzes. So when they do get a chance to go back and take the quiz for a second time, um, that they know where to focus their studies and where to focus their time. We do find that often as students are going back and have the opportunity to take a second chance on a quiz, that if they just go back and they try and study the entire module. And this provides them with a really targeted environment so they know where they've struggled and where they need to know. Um, where they need to work to be better prepared for the next quiz. Um, we believe in teaching learners so that they have a, a, take a metacognitive approach so that learners learn how to learn. We want our students to come out of the course understanding how to learn better and how to work through content, even if they come into a course that's a non-lumen course. Um, we do know that instructors are the most influential piece of a student's learning journey, and we want to increase that connection um, with the instructors and with the students. So the Lumen Courseware has a set of mes a messaging system that really helps connect the instructors with the students. And I think Elaine is going to talk about this a little bit more deeply with her students, but we provide um, templates for recommended messages and the, um, the teacher tools really make it easy for you to identify quickly which students are struggling and efficiently provide them with just the correct information so if they so they know exactly where they're struggling to invite them in for some additional help and it really does help um, strengthen that student instructor relationship as they move through there are some automated messages that go out and also some other messages that provide that template that makes it especially easy um, we do find as we work through with our at-risk students that if the first time an at-risk student receives um, a prompt to say, hey, we can see that you're struggling, come on in and get a little extra help. A lot of the students are reluctant to come in because they feel like they're in trouble or they don't have that nice connection with the instructor. So as it works through and they get that connection early on, we do find that they are more open to receiving that feedback and help just at the time that they need it. This is an example of one of those messages for students that's struggling. Um, we're trying to nudge the student into the correct behavior. So it just suggests to the student that their, their attempt on the quiz, they didn't do as well as they hoped to. Um, if they go back and use the formative assessments that they do better. And you can see from the student's response at the top that um, the student gives a lot of information that you may get to know your students a lot better. And it does nudge the student in the, in the direction that we'd like them that maybe I'll go back, take a look at those um, those formative assessments in order for me to do better. The other part of the automated assessments is really an encouraging message to those students when they're doing well. Um, as we've talked to instructors developing the content, a lot of instructors spend a lot of their time trying to get students that are just on that edge to help push them over the edge to pass the course, and they find they don't get nearly as much time to spend time with their students that are doing well. So giving that student a little bit of um, congratulations or nudge that they're doing well. We do get a lot of feedback from students that said, hey, I've never had an instructor reach out and tell me I did a great job in a quiz. I really appreciate it. And again, another way for you to build that communication and that relationship with your students. 
Um, we'll move on as we go through this. Waymaker is very easy to customize. There's a lot of things that you can customize. And as our um, Pima instructors jump on and talk about it, they're going to show what their course looks like um, and be able to show you um, how they've customized it and how they've worked so that it works well for their students. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to John. I'll give you the screen share. And he's going to dive into the Spanish course right now. OK, um, I am uh, just going to show you um, kind of a, the anatomy of a section within a module in the course, just so you kind of get a chance, uh, a chance to see how this is, is built and what kinds of things we're working with here. So to give an example, if you see, you see these are the assignments that have gone into the LMS natively. This is a study plan for one of the, the modules. And then each study plan, each module will have different sections. Each section then has pages. And so the students would work through these and, and uh, do the practice questions and assessments as they go along. Now, this will look a little different from what you'll see from our colleagues at Pima um, because of the customization that's possible with this course. Uh, one can kind of adapt it for online learning or in-class learning uh, and, and essentially, um, you know, make sure that it's, it's the right uh, Way to present the materials to your students. So um, each uh, section starts with an introduction. Often the introductions will sort of talk a little bit about the grammar in general, like what is an adjective, which can be helpful for students who haven't really learned those terms. Uh, each learning outcome starts with an en contexto section, which um, gives us uh, the idea in context and then asks some questions to help the students sort of find the grammar point in its native habitat. In this case, they're looking for um, uh, conjugations of verbs, I believe. And so the idea is they're looking at this poem and then they, they kind of think about how the verbs are conjugated and try to learn to uh, deduce those things before they've even been introduced to the grammar concept. Oops. Uh, and those are some machine graded activities they can do to test their comprehension. Then the the concept itself is introduced. This is, oh, I guess this is the adjectives, not the conjugation, sorry. Uh, different kinds of practice activities one can do. And then vocabulary of colors. Now, in the case of this course, all of our vocabulary is presented uh, as much as possible with images uh, rather than translations and also sound. So all these little play buttons will play the sound so students can hear it and work on their pronunciation. The reason we're using images instead of translations is we want students to associate the concept with the Spanish word rather than always translating in their head, okay, red, rojo. But in, in this case, we want to be able to go from the concept of red to the Spanish word. And we try to do this throughout in all of our, um, in all of our, uh, vocabulary activities. Once they've kind of read through that content, learned that content, then it's time for learn by doing. There's a lot of machine graded practice activities here. Uh, and this is true for all the learning outcomes. There are audio questions. So you play the audio and then select the correct answer as to what color the various things are. Um, and all of the practice activities have feedback. So if I get it wrong, it'll help us to, it'll help me to see why I got it wrong. It doesn't just say wrong. And then, and this is where the, the Pima version diverges from what I'm showing you, um, we also have a lot of communicative activities. Now, of course, how you present communicative activities will change depending on whether it's online or on ground or how, how many times a week you meet and so on. But in this case, you can see we've just provided a lot of content, a lot of OER content that can get students actually communicating with, e with each other. So in this case, for instance, it's uh, a, a set of images where one student has the image in color and an image in black and white. The other student has the opposite. So they have the first picture in black and white and the second one in color. And then they have to communicate about what color these different objects are. You could have them even colored in if you're in an in-person class. Um, so the idea is that, that each of these 
learning outcomes has a selection of different activities to get students talking to each other, as well as some suggestions about how to do that in different, uh, different modalities. I'll stop the share there and, and just say, so that's, the, that's again the anatomy of like one section. And again, each module has several sections and each section has many pages. All right, I'll just take over quickly. You, or are you, my... are you, is it Chrome? Oh, there we go. There we are. Ah. All right, and then we'd like to um, introduce our three um, PMA um, instructors. Uh, Elaine is the department head of PMA Online. Myra is the department head for the face-to-face -face classes, and Liz is the world languages discipline coordinator. And just a little bit of information about Pima. Um, it's a two-year college serving the greater uh, Tucson metropolitan area, which is at six locations throughout Pima County. This is in my way. Um, and right now they're piloting their Spanish 1 or Spanish 101 in four pilot sections, and these are all fully online. And you can see in the fall of 2020 that they'll be adopting additional um, sections, both for their online and face-to-face -face students. So I'll go ahead and turn it over. Um, Elena, is that, are you going to take it from here? All right. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Elena Grajeda, and hopefully you can see my Spanish page. I'm showing you here a uh, just a live course because it's a little more exciting than the master, but then I'll turn it over to the master so you can see how we have taken the Waymaker um, Spanish One material and integrated it into our fully online courses. Um, as John said, um, there were a lot of interactive activities. We didn't discount them. We just adapted them into the tools and the three of us will uh, show you how we did that. But here is the uh, a live course where you can see the topics here in the announcements. This is actually the Spanish One Lumen material. Um, so we, we are able to use it with throughout the course. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about what we introduce, where the study plan is in our courses. So I'm going to move over to the master to show you where it actually is located. This is a D2L learning management system. Um, we used to use Blackboard, so I'm familiar with that, and, and Canvas as well. But in D2L, the content is um, where we put all our um, learning materials. So under the instructor resources, Liz will talk about that a little bit later, is where our Waymaker faculty tools are that we are loving and enjoying uh, uh, the communication with students through there. And then we have turned the first six chapters, which are unidades in the Spanish one that John just showed you, into the six modules that you see here to the left. Rather than put study plan right here, we wanted them to enter our web page and start with some of our instructions because this is a fully online class. The, the instructor needs to present him or herself and that's where this happens. So you'll see in Unidad Uno, our layout does have the study plan right here to the right. These are the descriptions right from uh, Waymaker from Lumen Spanish One. And then we have a presentation video. So in my own class, you'll be able to see that here's my class and I have myself there in my introduction. And the vocabulary that I'm using here comes from the Hola Como Te Llamas first chapter, the first three sections, actually. So that's how we were able to do it for fully online. We have the instructor presenting. We have a few instructions, and then they go right over here and click. We decided rather than opening the Waymaker pages right here, it takes, some, it takes over D2L. And so the students ha would have a little bit of navigation we have this open in a new tab. So when I click on this, you're gonna see what John showed you there. There's the Waymaker course, and this is Unidad Uno, the first unit. 
and the different parts that um, we were already discussed, the beginning, how to get them started in the diagnostics, the actual chapters, and then finishing strong. The reason for that tab is we want them to be able to go back and forth. And in a mobile device, it opens in two windows. And we, we, we show the students how to navigate that. Uh, otherwise, there was a little bit of confusion with the, if I click on this, for example, and I'm here in one of the topics, well, we don't know if there was confusion because we're piloting, but we predicted that um, this next button and D2L's next button that was right underneath was going to cause the student problems. So that's why we did a double, um, we opened in two different windows uh, because you're navigating within D2L and also navigating within Waymaker. So far, we are in our second week of classes and students are navigating very well through these mm -hmm. Uh, different navigation tools and not getting lost with the the D2L navigation tools so where they're um, yeah. able to do it. So that's how we incorporated it a little bit. So our study plan, um, again, we have the the different sections of the first unit and the student can follow along and we provide the instructions here. We've also provided some some review videos. One of the adaptations that Lumen made for us, or I should say John made for us, is, uh, and you heard him talk a little bit about the interactive activities. Well, we have to guide them a little bit better in, way in online classes because we're not face-to-face. -face. So the putting it together became our review section, and we chose to have links there on things they're going to review rather than have the interaction there. However, we selected from those interactive activities and we put them into the D12 tools that we have right now, um, such as the discussion tools. So, um, Maida, you wanna talk about the discussion sure. tools and how we integrated that? So yeah, so in each unit, we, um, we divided the unit in between two or three parts. So the last part, um, they'll do a video assignment that Liz will explain later, but they'll also do a discussion post, which is a writing activity, a structured writing activity where they get to um, practice what they've learned in the lesson, in the unit, um, the grammar and the vocabulary. Um, so you're, okay. Can, Elena, can you show the actual discussion um, under assessments? Because then you can see them all. Okay. Um, so we, for each unit, you have a discussion post, like I said, that covers the vocabulary and the grammar, and it's guided. We're telling them, um, we're giving them prompts or questions uh, that we've taken from Lumen, from their um, additional resources, and we've made them into a discussion posts. We um, modify them a little bit to fit what we were um, trying to accomplish in each one. Um, they progress in difficulty, um, in length. Um, they start with more English and gradually switch to more Spanish, um, more open-ended questions. Um, but these, this material comes um, from Lumen, from the activities that, um, that we can use in the classroom because we're an online class and we converted them to a discussion post in this case. Um, we didn't actually modify the activity itself. We just... The questions. We just um, maybe changed a little bit the questions to fit um, what we were doing. Um, yeah, and that, I think that's it you know, for the discussions. So these came from the, uh, what, what would you call that, John? Uh, the activity pack or? Yeah, those are, those are in the, the Actividades pages, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the Unidad, uh, we have put these discussion posts show up right after the Lumen material, there it is again. Mm -hmm. And it's also in the content browser or they can go as Maida showed you up there. The other activity we use a lot is, is oral to engage students in speaking with each other and also with us. Liz was going to talk about those. Oh, we can't hear you, Liz. I think you're muted. You're <laughs> Mm -mm. No. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Okay. 
there you are. Great. So oftentimes the challenge with the fully online class is all of that oral production and making sure that the students have enough oral production that can demonstrate that they're mastering these materials. And we're very fortunate that um, our institution has a third party app that allows us uh, to do some of these um, video assignments where the students can engage um, asynchronously and synchronously. So what we are able to do, and I think Elena's gonna pull up and using um, the bongo tools, the student has two prompts per, uh, per course, per unidad, sorry. Um, one is more at the middle of the unidad where it's more kind of getting the student to just practice with the, the oral production of what they are currently working on. And then at the end of every unidad, we have more of a mastery, more complex um, type of video assignment where the student gives us a more elaborate response to a prompt that is given. And the, the students are then also asked to do, um, to give peer responses to each other. So that keeps the student engaged in the production, in the comprehension, and then again, responding to another um, classmate. So again, more structured output activities to demonstrate that oral proficiency. Um, and I believe Elena is showing you how they see the instructions, they see what prompts they are uh, being asked to do, and then they add their video on there. What's great as an instructor is that we're able to give them a video feedback as well. So as a student, if the student has um, any pronunciation matters that the instructor can give a little video response saying as much or as little as they want to just help um, encourage the, the, the correct pronunciation of a word, et cetera. And it just really creates more of a community feel when the students are able to visually see each other and then you start seeing that students tend to want to um, interact with certain classmates, you know, how they would create little groups in a class or that they try interacting with different classmates throughout the semester because they want to get to know everybody in the class. Um, so it's, it's become a, a very positive way how we can use some of those actividades activities and um, adapt them to the online environment uh, for the students to be able to have that oral production. We also have synchronous um, activities that we do as a midterm, as a final exam, and even as a um, optional, a lot of our instructors um, do optional um, sessions for students where they join in. We can grab some of these actividades and just work with the group of students that shows up to, to try to create some more oral production. Um, so that's how we've been able to work with making sure that the student is able to plentifully uh, do oral production in an online language course. And this one here, the Spanish clothing torsada, that came directly from the Lumen um, materials. So we, we just uh, have the students record their answers and then respond to their classmates here. So John, you should recognize this activity a little bit. So that's how we were able to take the, the activity packet and select from there some of the interactive uh, things that the students would, would do. We also took some of those and made them uh, a part of our final exam as well. Uh, Liz, you were going to talk about the, the tools. The the tool. tool. So what we have had a very positive experience with the Waymaker faculty tools, which we are barely in the second week. And um, I think we comment to each other how positive of an environment it is and how an encouraging environment it has become for students. Um, so in the morning, I sometimes get a digest saying, this student has been sent an email on your behalf, kind of saying, um, or this student needs, uh, needs it's struggling. Um, so I go into the Waymaker and I'm able to kind of tailor make a, a, an email that has already been pre-formatted. So I just have to tweak it a little bit. Um, if I happen to have a resource that maybe the student would like having this, I can always put a little link on there to maybe a tutorial I've made on that specific grammar point that I think that student can benefit. So instead of casting a wide net and sending all of the students, all of these resources that maybe some of them are already um, mastering a lot of these materials, 
the Lumen uh, Waymaker Faculty Tools kind of tells me these are the students that need the, the extra resources mm -hmm. so I can target those students. We've also had a lot of uh, positive um, feedback already from students because of the automatic nice work emails that the students get when they do well on their quiz. And uh, they might have had a response. I've had a reply from a student saying, thanks, professor. Um, it was challenging, but I'm glad I did well on this. Thanks for the note. So it's the students feel that we're there with, without us having to constantly be checking on them. Um, they're getting this feedback and they're responding well to it. Mm -hmm. I feel a little left out because all three of us are piloting these and I haven't received a thank you yet from a student. So I'm a little bit, I'm waiting for that moment, but they both have uh, received one, which is very cool. Uh, and then if you can see here to the left, oh Liz, did I interrupt you? No, okay. To the left, um, these are the, the first six modules and we just kept the title of each, each section mm -hmm. coming from the Spanish one materials. Um, it is pretty rigorous, so there we're we're testing out in our 16-week classes, if uh, including everything, how how that's working out. Uh, we have eight-week classes in the summer, so that'll be our first challenge to see how these six unidades, um, with all the activities and and all the different sections, um, will work for students in a six-week program. And I think that's our that's, yeah. That's it. So we had a lot of fun uh, with each of these chapters. So we, you can see we, we were able to really design a very interactive and engaging course for our distance learners. And it's about 40% of the college right now. So that's a big, big chunk. Looks beautiful. Well, we'll go ahead. Um, we'll go ahead and open up for questions. You have access to your microphones. Um, there's also a chat feature that I'll have John monitor. Mm -hmm. And if you want to ask questions, and then we'll come back and just talk a little bit about the partnership that we've had um, and how we uh, how we continue to continuously improve the course. So, any questions? Thank you all for for that. That was that was great. It's really fun to see it in action. Yeah, we we haven't seen the actual Pima course, so this was really exciting. Hello. I say yeah. hi. I do have some questions. Um, could you show me some of the interactive videos, like how that's set up for um, how students can they meet online together and have a conversation? Uh, they can if you set it up that way. We have set them up asynchronously, so their conversations are recorded. Uh, one of the feedbacks that we get from students that are distance learners, they're all over the country and we have service members as well. So time zones are sometimes a problem for planning. So for online, um, we have, we do have synchronous sessions that we set up with the instructor present in which there is conversation going on and, and they have options as to which one they can attend. But for the, for the student to student interaction, those are asynchronous and we're using within D2L a tool called Bongo uh, but you can also use video, a uh, voice thread, sorry, Zoom, um, some of the mm -hmm. other products that are out there. Uh, I think Blackboard calls it something else. I'm trying to remember what it was. Collaborate. Collaborate, yeah. So it's, it's just like the Collaborate tools. So is it something that's built into, um, already built in, or you have to set up the session for them like they don't necessarily meet on this platform it's, it's not built into Waymaker because these are all third-party plugins and it's impossible to predict which plugin a given school will have um, okay. when paying for something or if they're if you if, if your school isn't subscribing to bongo or voice thread then you might want to use Google Hangouts or you might want to use YouTube so the, the Lumen material is platform agnostic. So it could be, you could use it on anything, just the content as they've done at Pima. And then they took that content and put it into their, uh, their Bongo tool. Did I, have I understood that correctly of what you were saying? I think so. I'm just, I'm trying to think how, like, so the content is there. We would just have to set up instructions for them to go in and like record their sessions and collaborate, for example, and then turn it in through Blackboard somehow. 
Yes, yes. let me tell you what John did for us here from, from Lumen. He uh, put together for us, uh, let me find it here, textbook resources. So all of those activities that were in the, in the Lumen course are called here in-class activities. And we selected from there and created that voice activity. Okay. So th they are part of the Lumen materials. So if you open it up, you'll, um, I, I can link to it here and open. There's just tons and tons of, I don't know how many pages was it, uh, John? <laughs> but you know, a lot there. of stuff, yeah. So each unit has materials and we went through and selected which ones would work well for our discussion posts, which are more writing and which ones would work well for a quiz, which were more of a, a, a either a summative or a formative assessment and which ones were better for the voicing or the recording activities for each unit. So we, that's the first thing we did is take this material and for a fully online class, look at what would work best for each tool. So for the, for the video assignments, which are the asynchronous, where they record something and then a student responds, we, we decided to do it two ways. We did one at the beginning of the lesson or the unit. If we say it takes them a week and a half to do it. The first one is just a practice on pronunciation. So one of these activities, we turned into just record this. And the other one, the second one, that's why there's video assignment one, video assignment two. The second one is more interactive where they're recording something based on the activity and then a student has to respond to that. Um, so that, that did come from this groupings of materials that came out of the Lumen product. And, and I should also say that, that this is a, it, it, it's a nice feedback loop too, because I'm learning from Pima what they're doing and incorporating that into the new uh, version of the course as, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, how the course is coming out as, as Spanish one and Spanish two combined in one module to give you more, or one court cartridge to give you more flexibility. Um, things like discussions will be pulled out automatically into your discussion, uh, uh, into your discussion tool in your LMS, and you could you could erase those if you don't want them. But uh, so the idea is to try to make some of these changes that they've made at Pima sort of turnkey ready, so they're kind of ready to go. Uh, we can't replicate what's happening in Bongo because that is a third-party tool. But as much as I, as much as we can, we're trying to kind of learn from these uh, from this pilot and 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 build something that's uh, that's as adoptable as quickly adoptable as possible. Um, next question. I see that you have six units. How are the units divided? So what I mean by that is, um, like, are there different like basos when they within the unit with like vocab and grammar in each, or is it just one vocab section and then a couple grammar? Like, what's the layout of each unit? I can I can jump on that. So the first thing the first thing I, I should point out um, uh, is that, as I mentioned, we're going to do Spanish one and two as one cartridge now. So it, and each of the chapters that they're using each of these six modules is actually now divided in half. So this would be twelve modules. You um, mean for the Spanish one would be six modules? Spanish one is Spanish one is now twelve modules, and Spanish two is twelve modules. So it's twenty four total modules. Okay. Okay. Um, so each of these is cut in half, and I don't want to confuse you throwing around numbers and details, but what, what, it, what that means is that in Waymaker, you can delete modules and you can delete sections. So I've, uh, in designing it, we've put it, we've, we've built with the sort of smallest units possible so that you can customize it as you see fit. You could move modules around, you can add and delete, or you, could, you can delete modules, you can delete sections. These tiles you're looking at, those are all sections. And each section has about the same layout usually. It's usually uh, an introduction, an in contexto, the, either the grammar or vocabulary, and then exercises, uh, and then the, the, the sort of outro. So they, they all, it tends to slice out modularly. It's, we, we tried to make the whole thing kind of balanced so that different uh, uh, schedules could, so it could accommodate different schedules. And 
I, I missed how many sections did you say are typically in a module? Typically a module, the shorter modules typically have three sections. These okay. have five or six, I believe. Okay. Okay. Oh, so okay. Five, between three to five. six. Okay. 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 Just to get an idea of like what, what, how much content is in each module and how many activities are in a section. Like, I know that that's probably, um, I, I saw in the, uh, Oh, the presentation of the material material you have like a try it and that's probably not graded or it is graded um if it said try it it's not graded okay okay mistakes. Yeah. so typically of the graded materials how many activities are those per section about uh i do math in my head so i'm gonna look into the middle distance for a second uh i think the quizzes at the end are what about 20 questions long i believe at the end of the module okay. are about 20 questions long each section would usually have probably two pages two two pages with about three uh different activities on them each but those ones are not currently graded they will be graded in the future but for the time being the grade pass back is for the end of module quiz okay so there's about six activities per section uh three plus yeah, plus three. the formative the uh, um, sorry plus the quiz at the end i i would say yeah six to nine okay. uh, of the exercises okay yeah maybe maybe more and each of those then has eight eight questions or so right right but like separate activities yeah, yeah. okay okay um and it's i saw in the email it's uh, 25 dollars. i'm assuming that's like like you were saying the students come in it's already set up that would be probably attached to their fee of yeah this is <laughs> yeah there's a, we we do do payment in a lot of different ways um some institutions do do it with a course materials fee and you can do it that way um, other institutions will do it with an access code or an activation code so you can okay. purchase that from the bookstore directly from us and enter that in um, as they come in and enter the study plan or go to take the quiz. Um, but the students will have access to all the content as they come in. The um, access code is gated by the assessment at the end, the formative assessment. Um, so they have to, they get a couple that they can take and then by the third one, it says if you haven't entered the code, you need to go get it, go ahead and pick it up. But the students continue and to have access to the content. Okay, and that's what they're paying the $25 for. That's correct. So the whole thing is $25. Um, and again, through a course materials fee or an access code or activation. Right. And that, that would be, if it were through, like, for example, our bookstore, it would be $25 to the bookstore and then magically whatever they decided to put on top of that. That's correct. And we do have a... If you're if you're lucky enough to have a follow-up bookstore, we do have a partnership with them, so there's no markup with the follow-up bookstores. They they pay you pay twenty five dollars plus whatever plus whatever local or state taxes there are, but there's no markup through the follow-up bookstore for a, okay, and that's for like, like one semester. That's correct, or you can buy it direct from Lumen as well um, if it's not a follow-up bookstore, and that's just a straight twenty five dollars for for the one semester. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, is there, are there any opportunities to play around on something like this? To have, to have access to look at it and, you know, um, click on things and <laughs> Absolutely. get more um, of a feeling of, you know, a personal feeling of what it's like. Yeah, if you already have our integration set up, it's just a one-time integration on your campus. We're happy to give you a cartridge and you can just drop it in a course shell and play with it. If okay. we don't have that set up, we can get it set up. And in the meantime, you can use one of our demos or sandboxes. So okay. I'll go ahead and put my information um, at the end and you can reach out if you're interested. It's just Joni, J-O-N-I at lumenlearning.com. But I'll flash that up at the end and you can pull that if you like. That would be great. Because then, then I can get a better idea of, you know, looking at everything, seeing how it feels. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. I think those are all the questions that I can think of right now. I think I'm probably the only one who showed up. <laughs>
Actually, we have quite a few, but we would love oh, to hear. okay. I don't, I don't see any, <laughs> no, but no, I, mean, I see people who like presented, but. Yeah, you, the, you're probably asking the same questions they would. John, are there any questions in the chat? It doesn't look like it? No, no. Okay. All right, we'll take just a couple minutes and just talk about our relationship. We have loved um, engaging with Pima on this. One thing with the open educational resources that we use for these, for these courses is that it gives us the ability to make changes. And because it's digital, we're able to um, go ahead and incorporate those enhancements. So places that students are struggling, if there's a misaligned quiz question, if the content's not very clear, we can quickly make those changes so that we're making those continuous improvements as we've gone. And working with the Pima team, they work directly with John. Um, we do have a new, is that the? Yeah, that's the, that's the, the beta contribute button, which is something we're very excited about. So you can see that contribute button in the bottom. Instructors or students can click on that. They can give us immediate feedback on what they think might make the course better or something that they've enjoyed or is there a typo in here because this was the pilot this semester. Um, graciously, they've helped us fix any kind of typos or other issues with it. Um, so the contribute button is really exciting. How many changes have we made this semester with that? Do you know? Uh, I know we just we just started for Spanish but in econ and psychology. They they put a bunch in already. They're they're getting several a day, uh, but that's a much bigger. You know that's going to a ton more students, but students are very good at catching errors, <laughs> as it turns out. And and also just giving us additional information on what may be clear. And again, with the open educational resources, we believe that students learn by doing. So if there's a, a content that is is more difficult, we may add a, add in some additional problems or formative assessments down the road. So. Um, just talking a little bit, we'll turn it back over to our Pima faculty and see. But we've really enjoyed. Um, we are a team of educators at Lumen, so we understand the difficult, you know, when you switch over to a product that, you know, there is going to be a substantial uplift to get it into your course shell. Um, the Lumen content imports really easily, but it's also doing some design and work with that. So we do work really closely with them as, as, as you adopt and then continually work. Do you, do you want to talk about your adoption and the things that went smoothly and the things that maybe could have gone better and what you've liked with the improvements that have been happening? I'll make a few comments and then see if Liz and Maya have any. I know for us, as uh, we looked very closely at the content in our course learning outcomes. So that's what we matched up first. Uh, we found that the Spanish one material had a little more than what we needed, but it did cover the basic 101 content. And I think for me, um, trying to find where I had it, the using the, the, the textbook, um, try to remember where it is now. Oh, I think we've put it into our start here page, but the textbook, uh, the, uh, your original outline, John, not the Waymaker, really, yeah. helped us get, this is our, the overview of everything that's covered. So, and I think you can get that now. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for any connection. So that helped us see what the chapters and then the actual grammar content. So that's how we started out is just matching up the material, looking at how, um, you know, great images, the, because we've been looking at OERs now for three or four years, and uh, this was a very complete program, especially for online. Maida, I, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say of how we how we adopted it what why we adopted it um no i don't think i have anything else besides what you said um i i, I mean it's worked really well so far it's been great um i think our, we're getting really good feedback from our students in how it's set up um it's easy to navigate for them um and yeah like you say we cover all the course learning outcomes with i mean we have more there than um what we normally and we were able to work with that, with that material. Um, but no, I don't think it, Liz, do you have anything else to say? I can't. I can't. We can't hear you, Liz. <laughs> Your microphone was real low too, so. Yeah. Once we, were, we saw that this material is gonna work for us, then I think it was just a little bit of thinking through how can we make, make sure that the students um, easily navigate this um, to make sure that it, it's seamless um, process for them 
And once we decided to do little things like um, how Elena says, open up the, the plan of study in a different tab to make sure that is that the students can navigate back and forth between B2L and the platform, but that they're still speaking to each other. Then everything else started falling into place. But it's, it's just thinking through what does the online student need and, and how does the online student work with this? And they usually need more than one window. Um, once we, we wrapped our head around that, it was then everything then started falling into place. Um, so it, it just seemed to, uh, to, to, to accommodate the needs of our students because it's so flexible, um, because it works within B2L, but we were mm -hmm. able to put it completely into B2L, but then still have that separate little tab. And for the students, it, it's, been, it's been great to just go into, I'm on module one, so I'll just click on this module one and then seamlessly um, navigate with this one button that I have here and keep working through these exercises and asking my instructor for questions. So it's been great. And it is a pilot. We already have a couple of things that we are going to kind of move around and things like that. There were other two other considerations at looking at all the different OERs out there and plus our own. One, it had to be completely ADA compliant. Yeah. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. Our college is very strict on that. So I did notice that you know, Lumen was uh, willing to put it through the test. They did. We put it through screen readers and uh, our AD, um, ADA director uh, got his hands in there and did all kinds of things. And we were able to give feedback to Lumen, fixed it. It was really minor compared to some of the major issues I came across on other OERs. So um, definitely uh, ADA. The other thing that was really important to us is mobility. It had to be mobile friendly. It had to adapt to not just a, a a laptop, but also a tablet and also a telephone. Many of our students come into the class and now are using their telephones as their textbooks. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the nicest things about this product in, that I like is how it, how it adapts very quickly. I forget what that's called. It's when it's mobile friendly, I may, maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's, something, there's another term though that you know how it resizes itself and responsiveness oh that's it responsiveness yeah there was so it's very mobile responsive uh so that's you know that, that was like a you know strike three it's ours <laughs> we, we we decided to um adopt it at that time but we are in the pilot stage and we'll probably make some uh, uh, changes based on the new cartridge john is is working on and uh, things like that uh the other thing is you know our program is two years so we need to think about the the second year classes as well so we were looking ahead uh, but it definitely covers the typical actful uh, one one level one and level two material mm -hmm. i don't think you'll find anything missing and the other nice thing is it rolls out farther. We do um, do we do take a look at the data and analytics across all the schools that are running it. Since PIM is our first pilot, we actually do have some in SUNY piloting as well um, on a smaller scale. But um, as they as we look at the data and analytics across all of the institutions that are teaching it, we're able to see where students across the nation are struggling the most. And we take the that data and then we make it consistent improvements to the core. So as we've done with the piloting, as we move um, into that next stage, we can identify a concept or a student learning outcome where students are really struggling. And we may take a look at the quizzes and make sure that everything's well aligned, that the content is um, full, uh, is, is complete. And then we may look at adding some additional practice activities so that students dig in a little bit deeper and learn by doing. So that's kind of the next stage as we roll it, as we've rolled it out into the bigger, um, into the um, outside of the pilot stage as we're doing now to make those continuous improvements and look to keep it current and keep it up to date. Anything else you want to say, John? No? Let me quickly grab the screen share and I will put up my, um, my slides one more time so that you can get information if you, uh, this one. If you want to go ahead and reach out and have questions, um, it's just Joni at LumenLearning.com. We can get you some additional information. And then if you also have additional questions for our Pima friends, we can connect you there as well so that you can get your questions answered and from John. So 
We're right at the top of the hour. So thank you so much for joining. We'll stay on for a few more minutes. Um, really appreciate um, Elena, Liz, and, and Maida, Maida yeah. joining us so that they could talk about their experience and, and give you some additional information. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was great to see you all. Thanks for the information. You want Bye. To Bye. Adios. Adios. <laughs>